you are a anti-Semitic if you say Israel has been involved in war crimes. Okay, let's get that straight. If you even employ that Israel might have used war crimes, you are a conspiracy, you are against them, and they never committed no war crimes. It doesn't matter what we saw on TV. That doesn't matter, okay? We never seen them use 155 millimeter shells. We never heard Nat Netanyahu say that he called 200,000 homes and told them to get out of their houses because they were going to bomb them. There's 200,000 homes getting hit with 155 millimeter shells that they said were precision bombing. Now, when you call a 155 millimeter, millimeter shell precision bombing, just remember, that's got a 900 foot kill radius, a 900 foot, 3 football fields minimum of maiming and killing radius. So, that's not just going to kill the people, that's going to blow the shit out of all the buildings, and all the material in those buildings are moving projectiles, okay? They're projectiles. They're blasted away from the strike zone at a phenomenal rate by high explosives. Now, let's not mention the depleted uranium they shot through every building, every school, every church, every house, every family car. And he used this against family homes and family cars. While Gazans may still be in shock from the intensity of Israel's 22-day offensive, the International Atomic Energy Agency says it will investigate allegations that Israel used ammunition containing depleted uranium. And they justified it. Uh, we don't know because they just don't justify it. They don't cooperate with investigations. But they blasted everything now, so the land, the water, the soil, everything's got contamination on it, right? For 10,000 years. The IAEA says that if you find a little sliver of depleted uranium, you're supposed to put a 300 foot fence around that with all kinds of danger signs on it. So, what happens if you blast it through every single building? But I'm so all that dust gets into the water, gets into the animals, gets into the land, can't grow food without that being contaminated. It's a genocide. But you're an anti-Semitic if you say that. Okay? The Israelis are now restricting the coverage of uh, this conflict in terms of what we can film to just one, one spot, the very north of Gaza border, it seems. The white phosphorus over the city, I guess they never used that. We never seen that on TV. That's not what we saw. What they were doing, that was a smoke screen for their soldiers. But it was used over civilians, which is against the law, right? It's against the law. It's, it's immoral. It's immoral. It's, it's absolutely barbaric, really. So you contaminated the entire country. What are you supposed to do? Anywhere that gets strike with depleted uranium, you're supposed to remove uh, 900 foot of topsoil, three inches deep, I'm sorry, four inches deep, around every single building plus the building, and ship that to a nuclear waste site. But there was no war crime, okay? Let's backtrack. No matter what anybody says, and anybody seen, and anybody investigated, and anybody got proof of, there was no war crime. They used unknown dime bombs. Doctors in the coastal strip say Israel is using unconventional weaponry on the civilian population. Uh, we have uh, clear uh, evidence that the Israelis are using a new type of very uh, high explosive weapons which are called dense inert metal explosives which is made out of a tungsten alloy. These uh, weapons have an enormous power to explode. Now, the dime bombs blew the legs off people but didn't hurt their upper body. We've never even seen this weapon before. This is a new weapon that we have no idea the actual and it shot out micro-sized chunks of metal to be determined uh, is, is com composite, but we know that it was carcinogenic, most likely mixed again with depleted uranium. But those humans who are hit by this uh, explosion, this pressure wave, are cut in pieces. On the long term, these weapons will have a cancer effect on those who survive. They will develop cancer. We also seen them using um, bombs with Darts in them. Darts go in your shoulder, out the leg, in, in, in your leg, out your shoulder, you know. It travels and it rips through all the lungs and organs, tissue, and just traumatic long-term damage. So if there's any civilians left alive that weren't hurt, they have to deal with the ones that are injured, and that minimizes any kind of risk to their soldiers, the Israeli soldiers. 
But you're never saying that. That's a war. That's not a war crime, because Israel done it. And if you say anything about it, you're an anti-Semitic. Because you're not allowed to talk about it, or you're an anti-Semitic. So we must be anti-Canadian, because we're talking about Canadian crimes, like privatizing our water, which is traitorous to the entire country. Countries go to war over that. I must be anti-USA, because I criticize USA. I must be anti-everybody, because I'm criticizing everybody. You know? So, it's not only anti-Semitic, right? Anti-Semitic is like a four-letter word. You're not allowed to talk about it. You're not allowed to mention it. You're not allowed to uh, 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 have it on the news, the actual facts, what it's been called anti-Semitic. It's a brainwashing culture that's reprehensible that we're letting a chunk of people who claims they're chosen by God. And let me tell you something. In Psychology 101, if you talk to God, you're considered normal, sane. God talks back to you, you're considered insane. Psychology 101. You're considered insane if God talks back to you. And according to the Jews that are war mongrels, not the, not the Israel people, it's it's the war mongrels. They say God talked to them. They say that uh, you know what they're doing is, is good. It's the right thing to do. And this is what they tell everybody. They brainwash their civilians with that it's okay because God never talked to them. God talked to us. Okay, the very definition of insanity. So they kill, and those who survive uh, risk having cancer. All that is happening here in Gaza now, it is against international law, it is against humanity, and I think it is very much against what it means to be a decent person. You don't treat other people like this. Even if you disagree with them, maybe even if you fight with them, you don't pre treat civilians, children and women like this. Realize at least three other Israeli high-ranking government, not even going to get into it, have been charged and convicted, in one case, of war crimes. So it's not a unprecedented case that Barack goes to Britain, who's under Geneva Convention, is supposed to investigate this and is aware of it, has United Nations Red Cross and Human Rights screaming in their ears and says, we're going to give him immunity and uh, shut up. Just shut up, because you're anti-Semitic. You're an anti-Semitic. Anti-Semitic. You're anti-Semitic, because you spoke out about Israel. Go speak out with somebody else, but don't talk about Israel. You can't make this stuff up, okay? Israel Defense Minister Ehud Barak escapes an arrest warrant in the UK for war crimes in Gaza. Did political considerations override justice? And what does it all mean for the applicability of international humanitarian law abroad? In 2001, then Prime Minister Ariel Sharon was tried, though not convicted, in absentia in Belgium. This was for the 1982 massacre in Palestinian refugee camps in Beirut. In 2005, the retired General Doron Almog did not get off his plane at London's Heathrow Airport. That was for fear of being arrested. He was in charge of the Israeli army in 2002 when they destroyed over 50 houses uh, in Gaza. And in 2007, the Israeli public security minister, Avi Dishter, was warned he could be arrested in Britain. And this was in connection uh, to the 2002 assassination of a senior Hamas militant in Gaza. And that attack killed 14 other people, including nine children. Long term, short term, we still need accountability for war crimes. Because without accountability for war crimes, the government can commit any crime they want against anybody they want. Against they can do whatever they want with just complete impunity, which will only cause hatred worldwide. Right? That's all that's going to cause. With no accountability, everybody gets angry, right? And they stay angry. They pass that on to generations. That, you know, there has to be accountability in order for everything to heal. Um, we really have got to have the accountability that you were talking about, Nick, because otherwise we are seeing that governments uh, can decide themselves uh, whether their actions are uh, uh, legal and so on. That's why we have the United Nations. That's why we have international law and international humanitarian law, precisely so that we can have a standard of morality, a standard of behavior, which all people can hope to achieve.